when it comes to contracts for agency, the common law is applied to excellent effect. If you hire an attorney, you can be sure the attorney is not going to be working for someone else. If you hire an electrician, that person is going to do what he feels you would do if you had the capacity. The agent is held legally to account for representing the one who enters into the agency relationship, and the courts will almost always support it in accord with the terms written into the agency agreement. In a like way, the mailman who dumps part of the mail he carries out in the trash will be prosecuted for his failure to act as the agent for delivery. This area of common law, as expanded into business relations, is both effective and supported. It is supported, that is, until the government leadership decides to interfere with the agency relationship. We have addressed the mess made by this established educational agency. It is government arranging for teachers to have authority of a parent without effective responsibility to the parent. Our first and most uncomfortable application of agency is seen in congressional representatives who dismiss any accountability to those who elect them into office. They accept the authority to act in the name of the people, but take acts that these people would not take on their own volition. Should you need an example, consider that our educational agents are not selected by or given authority by the ones they are to represent. Government authorities have determined that they get to pick other people's agents for raising their children. This is the worst sort of governmental abuse, denying that even the law of agency will apply to those who are given in loco parentis authority. What puts the icing on this cake is that the courts, the ones who are there to protect justice from governmental interference, are the worst offenders of parental sovereignty when it comes to the exercise of illegality. We know that there is no authority in any citizen to assign his or her neighbor's agents. They cannot tell their neighbor who they have to trust. There is no way that the, this authority can be given to the people in their representative government. It is an out-and-out -out violation of the constitutional purpose of government. Modern commercial incorporation is just the third example of our U.S. government's open violation of the citizens who own it. It is legislative granting agency while denying agency responsibility and accountability. As a side note, this encourages economic misconduct in our economy in the same way that modern political operation in our government encourages political misconduct. Mismanagement always follows when authority is granted without appropriate responsibility for exercising that authority. Like parental agency for educators assumed by legislation, we have corporate agency assumed by corporate officers who have legislation as their only source of granted authority over the corporate property that is ultimately owned by citizen investors. Corporations are not citizens and they are ultimately owned by citizens. Everything that any corporation owns is ultimately owned by citizens, and corporate ownership is purchased through investments. So who do the officers of a business corporation supposed to, re to represent? And this leaves us with the hollow understanding that they are to represent the corporation. Guess what? There is no legal agency there. There is no establishment of trust, no accountability to the corporation. They are, by legislation, to be treated as the corporation that trusts them. In short, they trust themselves to do whatever they choose to do, claiming it is for the benefit of the corporation. Do they represent anyone? Certainly they have no accountability to the people who work in the corporation, who are also employees. If they did, there would be no glass wall, no us and them operation of the corporate business. If they represented the employees, there would be no division between management and labor. They are likewise protected from almost all demands of owners and investors. They effectively answer to the corporation that they run, as if they were the corporate owners. In modern corporate theory or an approach, Whatever they do as corporate officers is what the corporation has decided to do. 
This is not some application of common law for the benefit of common people. It is legislative creation of a commercial aristocracy. It is people who are authorized as owners of the property belonging to others, and they are subordinate only to government. The existence of the modern commercial corporation is the fruit of government leadership that feels no need to represent the commoners of America. It is the bitter fruit that comes from a sovereign ruler who would set the common people under authority of economic barons. This arranges a commercial aristocracy to rule over corporate resources in the name of the sovereign. Our laws of incorporation witness the intentional creation of economic feudalism. If you plant seeds from a thorn tree, you get a harvest of thorns. Where corporate government denies its agency to citizens in creating modern corporations, the fruit is corrupt corporate leadership that denies its agency to anyone. The leadership acts as owners of other people's property and does it with the active involvement of government protecting their actions from any displeasure by the owners. But where is the fruit of granting the corruption of personal ownership? It is seen in these same corporate leaders, for the good of the corporation, investing corporate resources to influence political leadership. Corporations are not even citizens. For non-citizens to buy influence in government is bribery. It is a felony. It is something so obviously criminal that any citizen who engages in buying special privileges would face prosecution. For our political leaders to accept value from these non-citizens is bribery, for which they should be thrown in prison right along with the corporate donors who offer that corruption. Our political leaders have exercised their legislative authority to create this corruption and now take active part in it. Corporate barons no longer answer to government authority, but have become the ones who influence government activities. What we see as a recent witness is the most amazing and revealing political assertion that these corporate giants are too big to fail. We have government protecting the barons instead of serving the people. The same government leadership that started with denial that they serve the people have now created their own masters. Our political barons have so mismanaged government that it now answers to the same corporate barons that it has created. They feel powerless to challenge these economic leaders because they have become primary source of political potency through the improper authority that was granted in violation of the common law. This is systemic corruption. And neither the political nor the economic aristocracy is able to disrupt the corruption without denying their own privileged authorities. Agency is a contractual matter. Whenever and wherever the government, whether through legislation, executive action, or judicial determination, creates an agency without contractual agreement, we will have to live with the resulting corruption. For the courts do not serve the purpose of justice, but arrange the theater of the courtroom to, use, to the use of legal aristocracy, then even the appearance of justice puts wasteful expenses on citizens who might come seeking justice that is their right as sovereign citizens. The court assigns the indigent citizen a public defender. What is this nonsense that the court picks an agent for the accused? Agency is a contractual relationship and the government is forbidden to even interfere with contractual relationships. Having the courts set these obligations is just a witness to the improper operation of the entire court system. It is a denial that the courts serve we the people, serving law instead. Like legislative leadership that now answers to the corporate barons that it created, so the judicial function now answers to legislators. It is our entire legal system that demonstrates political corruption at every level. The rule is there for all to see. There is no less effective way to do anything than to divide into competing sides where one side can only accomplish what the other cannot prevent. 
our entire judicial system is engaged in waste, serving the court system instead of the citizens who come before it. It does much of this at public expense, passing the cost of the system to the people who supposedly authorize its continuation. The appropriate rule is found in medical science. An infection never heals itself. It either runs its course and the corrupt person heals, or it kills its host. We have a corruption in law and government that has no limit. It will continue until it kills the nation or until there is an outside interference that kills the infection. A corporation may be a legal person but is not independent from its creators and owners, that is the Frankenstein monster myth. Corporate leadership declaring some corporate action to be in accord with a corporate purpose does not excuse it from legal responsibility to corporate owners. That is an attempt to create agency by act of law, granting corporate officers authority to act as agents of the corporation, even though the corporation is not required to honor or accept human trust relations. The challenge for the U.S. citizen is that these organizations are now functioning as monsters, as legal persons who do not answer to the ones who created them. As in the Frankenstein story, the created being has been empowered to decide on purposes to serve. And then government legally protects corporate leaders when they act on their hired leader wishes. And this gives us the answer. We are not part of this corruption, and it only exists because government has denied the very purpose we gave to it in its constitutional creation. In our national infancy, we did not realize that it would become so damaging, and we allowed it to continue. This is not required of us. We are the sovereign source of all government authority, and we are the source of all commercial authority. Where we assume our positions as corporate owners of this nation, we become the cure. It is a cure that we will direct. We can direct it whenever and wherever we are agreed. By our agreement, we become the only party in interest. The direction is also indicated in the medical example. The infection is living off of us. If we cut off its ability to live on our productivity, the corruption will no longer be able to survive. Where we pick up the reins of management and turn our leadership in a direction that serves citizen needs and wants, then that is the way that our leadership will go. In the study of legal agency, we find a way to understand the corruption from which our government and its leaders suffer. We find legislative leadership that responds more to non-citizen influence and to our needs and wants. This is corruption that legislative leadership created when they denied their authority was limited by the common law agency. We find legislative creation of a corporate agency that seems designed to create a corporate aristocracy, one that answers only to itself, corrupting our political leadership as it continues. We also find that we, when agreed, are in authority to put a stop to this. We are, as a people, the authorities that can lift our government back onto the track that was set for those who represent us. We do not have to honor commercial corporate authority as our elected leaders are now do, going to do, for we are the real source of government. When gathered, we can lift our government leadership back into authority over corporate economy eliminating the wasteful corruption by redefining corporate purposes to serve the purpose of our nation. And this purpose is the public purpose, and we are the public.